Hello, hi, hola, handle and greeting. I'll tell you what, I've been passing something around the internet that has to do with Blender's environment. The fake horizon that Blender provides and the fake curvature that we have to create as artists. I can illustrate that maybe really quickly with GIMP if you'll give me just a moment to draw this out. Ah, oh, it's one of these. <laughs> the angle between our tangent to what we can see of the horizon of the planet we're on is completely different when we're at different altitudes. The problem is that Blender creates the horizon of whatever sphere we're on parallel to the tangent we're on. Okay, that was not graceful. Here's the fake horizon, and here's the fake curvature of yesterday's post to Twitter, which I did at about 2 in the morning. Before that, I had posted on Stack Exchange about Blender's flat earth problem. I used the XY axis to describe the problem when really I should have been using the Z axis to describe the problem. In using the Z axis, it becomes a lot more clear. Now here is a live look at Blender right now. I'm using the dynamic sky and if you can see this line right beneath the mouse, that is where the clouds stop and the horizon should be. I've positioned the camera in a helicopter above these mountain ranges. Now this mountain range will have to stretch infinitely into Blender's distance to meet this horizon. And it's not as though it's a simple horizon. This is a very complicated set of nodes that are created with an add-on called Dynamic Sky that you can create and access through the World tab right here. Dynamic Sky is not stupid, but it's lacking an important thing. In the middle of all these nodes is a normal node and a color ramp, and the colors you chose to represent the high noon part of the sky and the horizon color of the sky. And then below the low horizon color of the sky, you get this sort of albedo color which is supposed to be the reflection of light from the surface of whatever planet you're on. It's not necessary, but even the dynamic sky has it. Everything comes out of one texture coordinate node. I've added a texture coordinate node because I'm using an empty to drive the direction of the sunlight itself without having to change the dot because the dot to me is very random and unpredictable. But what I have here is an empty that points directly to where the light is coming from, from the dynamic sky. I made another video about that on the channel. But this is what I had to add and I used Shift D to just copy and drop this onto the node. Now let me get rid of that. What I did was then change from normal to point, and it interrupts the connection between the normal node that's in charge of the color separation and the generated texture coordinates that create this weird fake horizon. Remember, this is a completely artificial fake horizon, and it's at zero on the z-axis height. This is a completely fake curvature of wherever I am. Who cares? A small moon, an asteroid, someone's head, it doesn't matter because circles and spheres are proportional to each other. The point is my horizon doesn't help me fake it. So once I realized it was at zero on the z, it dawned on me that maybe I could just lower the thing by changing the mapping. In order to lower it, I have to give a positive value. So it's a little, uh, there, there must be a very good reason for that, but I'm not going to overthink it. So I changed it to point, and then what I did was I increased it just as much as was needed to make, maybe 0.15, enough to make the horizon appear as though it's curving around where I am. And I'm even using a nice curved camera to get a, a good a good sense of curve and depth so not everything is straight parallel lines and that is uh, that's essentially it so I was saying on Twitter 
Who is going to fix the Blender Flat Earth problem? Well, it looks like Blender will. So it's an important Adjusting too far will noticeably reduce one half of the environment into an ever decreasing circle while stretching out the opposite side. It's true, and that's exactly what should happen. The farther you are away from the zero of Z, smack dab in between the sky and the ground, the larger one will appear. So that's exactly what I was going for. And here, this equirectangular, here, this equirectangular view gives us a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I do hope some of you found that useful and understood what I was babbling about, but I just uh, was staying up late at night trying to solve this problem, and now the problem is solved because it wasn't really a problem to begin with. Make better landscapes by targeting that horizon where you no longer have to cover it with weird, deep, distant mountains, or a tree line, or cars, or mist, or clouds or really tall flamingos. I hope that helps some of you. I just had to post that real quick. Thanks for watching.